yeah fine uh, okay here we will start ganga yeah just go ahead yes sir okay sir fine thank you sir good afternoon everyone i think i am audible to all yes ma'am yes every once in a while a new technology an old problem and a big idea turns into an innovation good afternoon everyone present over here Tondadara College of Engineering Gadag Entrepreneurship Innovation Incubation Cell organizes awareness program on intellectual property rights under the banner of Kalam Program for Intellectual Property Literacy and Awareness Campaign. So, I welcome everyone on behalf of our Tondadara College management, principal, faculty, and staff. And most importantly, I would like to welcome all the participants to this session. So now I would like to welcome our today's resource person, Mr. Arpit Joshi, sir. Now I call upon Prajwala to introduce our speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Now I'm going to introduce today's resource person, Mr. Arpit Joshi, sir. Examiner of Patents and Designs, Patent Officer, DB, IIT, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, New Delhi. Education qualifications, BTEC, <clears throat> from National Institute of Technology, Silchar. Work experiences, post academics, work for Alstom and General Electric. Actually, unmute one. Engineer, which one is meeting? Unmute one. Hmm. 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 I request all the participants to please mute your mic. Sorry for the interruption. Work from Al Alstom and General Electric as a design engineer in power sector for three years in India as well as France. Then after joined as an examiner of patents and designs in the current department. Currently a part of the National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and deliver lectures in more than 25 seminars at different universities and institutes. Once again, I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Prajwala. I kindly request all the participants to be present throughout the session and all the participants will get the certificate from the Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell and AICT. And at the end of the session, we'll be sending a feedback link. So everyone, please do participate with our coordination. Now I hand over the session to the resource person, Mr. Arpit Joshi. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh... Thank you, Prajula ma'am, for introducing me. And so I'm a little bit ill, so I'll try to like uh, uh, do the uh, uh, in my best of the capacity to just uh, uh, have uh, uh, to just introduce all, all about the basics of IP and all. So a very I, on the behalf of Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion and Ministry of Commerce, uh, welcome all the faculties and students on board uh, for this uh, workshop, which is uh, basically on awareness of IPRs, which is basically intellectual property rights. Uh, actually, since we are like, uh, whether it, in, uh, it is BTEC, whether it is MTEC, uh, generally engineering side or uh, in science subjects, we generally come across a lot of projects like, right, uh, in, in BTEC also in fourth year, we generally do a project or two. So basically, this thing, like sometimes we put a lot of efforts in like our fourth year projects and all, but uh, consequently, we don't know how to file a patent. Uh, if we are like uh, doing something new, if we are proposing something new, if, I, if we have invented something new, so I basically uh, I'm here to just uh, let you aware about the uh, IPs, IPRs, uh, patents, trademarks, so that you people like uh, know some basics and uh, consequently if you're putting a lot of hard work in like your <coughs> in your projects, whether it is BTEC, I have already told you, whether it is MTEC, uh, a lot of hard work in this is and all that thing so you can like file a patent and all so basically i'm just here to aware you about the basics of ips also either you are from science background or uh, 
uh, engineering background or like any background uh, knowledge of ips uh, doesn't matter like uh, knowledge of ips uh, background doesn't matter like you can think work and act like on keeping the basics in mind also it will be have help well, helpful in uh, general awareness and all <clears throat> also i'll show you in the meantime that uh, background doesn't matter in filing whether uh, you are filing a patent whether you are filing a trademark and all so uh, i must start my presentation i just want to keep my presentation little bit raw uh, with the minimum use of slides since uh, i want to like uh, inculcate so not inculcate just want you to uh, give some basics and all so i uh, with some practical examples and all that thing so i will uh, be using slides a little bit uh, less and all right <clears throat> so here i start my workshop and uh, this is basically a awareness program uh, under national ip awareness mission uh, ministry of commerce and industry so this is me presentation by me nepam now <coughs> so basically today's uh, in in today's scenario we generally uh, are like there are like lot of concern about ips and all we generally hear like uh, something related to ips in whether in world intellectual property forum whether in wto we come like lot of like drugs cases means uh, all that thing like right? so basically what i am telling you that ips today play a very very important role like whether it is uh, like every product you use for instance uh, maybe uh, you are using uh, your mobile phone right now maybe you have a you are connected to laptop or desktop whether all these things uh, means they do use ips in one form or another intellectual property is something like you can't you can't escape it you can't deny the fact that it exists like also uh, every product we use today apart from like the input costs uh, suppose input costs are generally uh, three factors came into our mind come into our mind it's like land labor and capital but apart from these costs land labor and capital uh, the cost involving in ips like the royalty cost the licensing cost these are so so much high and uh, means the it uh, constitutes a major chunk uh, in the uh, determining the pricing of the of any product or device so basically ips the cost involved in ips the cost involved around ips like royalties uh, cost related to new, new technologies and all uh, it plays a very very important role and a huge chunk is going into that thing right <coughs> you can see that uh means uh, the uh, like the gadgets or uh, uh, like two years back covid was there uh, we eat like medicines gadgets and all that thing we eat like vaccinations we have like covid two years back uh, uh, first vaccine was manufactured by pfizer and you know the price was humongous means the normal people of india can't afford that back that covid vaccine so basically what i'm telling you that the human risk cost that was involved in like the pricing of pfizer was just because of the r and d the research and the technology pricing uh, the cost involved in some patents and all so basically uh, these ips play a very very important role and for the country like india where the country is in like a uh, in developing stage and we used to achieve a lot uh, today but so in country like uh, india which is in developing state the pricing of product plays a very very important role and pricing is a major concern and in uh, another aspect you can see that uh, paying a huge huge price in form of ips uh, we are like uh, indirectly transfer not indirectly but directly transfer the money to the uh, pockets of foreign companies so basically uh, i must say that we must like uh, uh, think and act to uh, build the innovation center in india uh, build uh, means <coughs> to <coughs> 
we should be like uh, uh, putting more emphasis on the innovation and all because rather paying money to the foreign companies and all we should like promote innovation and creativity in in our own space so uh, basically uh, that's why uh, i have uh, just given you example that how uh, how how these ips uh, how these ips be it vaccination or are playing a very big, important role in uh, pricing and all and they are the uh, driver of the global economic scenario okay <clears throat> So uh, now, what are uh, basically what are IPs? Uh, IPs like uh, intellectual property, right? So what are IPs? So intellectual, uh, see, there are two type of properties, right? Uh, one thing, uh, one sort is like uh, tangible, like you can touch it, you can feel it. Uh, it is uh, physically there, like uh, your mobile phone, your laptop, your bicycle, your uh, bike uh, motorcycle your yeah. I'm sorry, uh, I think it was on mute. So <clears throat> basically, uh, what I was telling that uh, intellectual property, like uh, I'm, uh, I was explaining the difference like uh, intellectual property and property and the tangible property and intangible property. Now the tangible property I've told you, uh, like phones, uh, laptops, uh, cars, bicycles, bikes, and all that. While the intangible uh, property is intellectual property, that is something in our intellect that is used to create something tangible, something meaningful. Like so, <clears throat> this intangible property is known as intellectual property, which is recognized by the government because intellectual property, right? What is intellect? It is creativity. Property is assets, rights. Rights are given by the government. Okay. okay. So this intangible property is uh, used to produce something tangible. For example, it may be seeming a little bit complex, but now I'll give you an example. For example, uh, let's say uh, we shall uh, go backwards to like 2009 or late 90s. There was uh, landlines. We uh, have seen the landlines. Now, <clears throat> so these landlines, see, always uh, in intellectual property or you can say in patents and all we have this uh, thing the problem set uh, there is some problem and that problems need to identify with the solution and that solution in the form of new invention that solution in the form of new invention ultimately uh, leads to a patent so basically what i'm telling you like uh, i was uh, that intellectual property, that intangible property. Now, uh, in late 90s, uh, there was a mode of communication, mode of telecommunication was landline, right? And there was a problem involved with the landline. There was the issue of mobi mobility. Means you can't carry landline everywhere, right? You can't carry the whole set of with you everywhere so uh, the problem set at that time was the mode of communication that it was not with very ease like there was a portability issue there was transportability issue so basically <clears throat> so at that time uh, <clears throat> that 
idea that uh, new solution to that problem that the uh, the problem related to the portability that so the solution to that the idea was that some form of wireless communication right at that time only wireless communication can solve the issue of that uh, landline phones that uh, portability issue so an idea came up in the uh, in the form of wireless communication and <coughs> so basically initially it was an idea so a company came and uh, it checked the idea and it say whether that idea can be used to uh, can it be used to create something meaningful can it be used to create a device which can uh, take away the problem of portability so thereafter came the uh, like there was uh, the company took the initiative it uh, took the rights of that idea that technology the wireless communication so it took the uh, it took the rights of that uh, like it took the rights of that idea and a prototype was built that prototype was checked whether it is industrially applicable whether the form the portability issue uh, whatever the device was formed the prototype uh, that prototype was able to solve the problem of like the portability or or not so <coughs> so uh, i'm saying that the rights uh, were taken by the uh, company itself after that the rights were taken a branding see a company needs to brand uh, needs to sell a product under some brand and all so a brand like company have took the rights of brand he the company uh, went to the government it registered a brand and under that brand name it starting uh, started building that uh, mobile phones and all and ultimately started selling that mobile phones so basically <clears throat> that mobile phone problem what was that the, the problem was the portability issue of that landline ultimately it comes to the wireless communication prototype was built rights of that idea were taken by the company after that uh, a prototype was built obviously the branding and all the company started selling it so basically in this process various type of ips was <coughs> involved later on uh, what happened the mobile phone that was formed initially uh, was used to have uh, like uh, uh, very very large keypad and very small screen right uh, after that see basically any device or any something it, it there is a constant process of evolution like at always at some point or at every point rather there will be a different set of problem right after that mobile phone was built there the issue was the visibility issue the issue was like <coughs> that the screen size was very less and the keypad was like uh, very large so ultimately what you have seen through evolution of mobile phones the keypad was getting smaller and smaller and screen size was getting bigger and bigger ultimately the keypad was all together all together removed and the screen size was like uh, it was the screen only the screen was there various use of sensors and all you have seen the sensors and all gyrometer accelerometer pressure so basically so basically to uh, to provide the to provide the ease of use and all that thing uh, constant uh, constant evolution was there and people founded the people identified the problem set right uh, you can see in the uh, camera itself introduction of a rear camera then after secondary cameras and all front camera so basically there was a constant uh, evolution process and <clears throat> all we have to do is to identify the problem set like in the case of landline the problem set was the issue of the portability after that mobile phones the issue was small screens and larger keypads ultimately whole touch screen is there so basically <clears throat> i told you like this uh, phone that we have got today is the constant is the product of the constant evolution and all and <clears throat> ips in this case i must tell you like it started from landline now the ips related to this phone is 
so so much more like, uh, from the like from the new technology like uh, display technology from the design aspect expect from the branding and all means there are from the ic's layout see there are various uh, type of ips in what for example <coughs> i must show you uh, for example if this is a mobile phone like you must see this mobile phone and i'll tell you the ips involved so the the initially there was the issue like uh, a single issue a portability issue which ultimately leads to the evolution of mobile phones right and this mobile phone which i am holding uh, in my hand is a product of the constant evolution and it involves various various form of ips right uh, for example uh, this phone this phone is having some sort of identification over there like you can trace the origin of the product from that brand from that logo from that symbol like what is this show the branding and branding related to trademarks if the company haven't got this logo registered in its name everybody can sell the phone in its logo everybody can manufacture the logo and and brand it under this logo since the company known as apple registered this logo under its name nobody can use it and then only the reason is this that you can identify that this phone belongs to certain certain manufacturer you can trace the origin of this product to a certain brand just because a company has taken that trademark of this symbol so what i am telling you the ip is involved in this product which started from the issue of the landline phones the portability issue right <coughs> so this is a logo which is a trademark apple logo trademark by apple now i'll show you this phone now this phone has a display apple have the patented technology with respect to the retina display apple call it the retina display now the retina display is a patented technology by apple so i have shown you another ips a form of ip i have told you here the trademark the brand name now the second ip the technology involved the display technology involved that apple call as retina display is a patent technology right thereafter i have shown you two ips like third ip i am going to show you now this is a mobile phone like it has certain like you you can see some bezels over here you can see the design of the panel the back panel the curvature of the panel all these things like all these things which is visible to our eye which is aesthetic in nature which has no value no functionality value means if i put uh, like some like a a a 1 mm radius more in this curvature would it be hampering its functionality or would it be improving its functionality no that one That that extra one mm uh, curvature here won't affect its its functionality. So basically, what the design is design is something that is visible to eye, which is aesthetic in nature. It does not have any functionality value, right? So I have shown you three IPs, <coughs> and the issue was portability issue of landline, right? <coughs> I have shown you three IPs: the patent technology, the Apple logo, and the design expert. Now. for if you buy any phone like apple samsung you uh, they give you a user manual like how to use it directions to use and all that thing now this manual they the company which they gave which they give to you is a copyrighted manual like right? samsung can't sell the manual that apple sell it in its own device means the user manual of apple uh, can't be like samsung cannot sell the user manual of apple in its product like because it is copyrighted like all the things like how to write the directions how to portray the direction uses and all that thing means the all the things related to manual nobody can copy it so basically i'm telling you the manual which is being given to you in the gadgets and all is a copyrighted manual by the company only so we have seen the use of copyright also in this mobile phone 
now <coughs> fifth one uh, in today's day uh, technology is changing day by day right uh, so uh, the size of the product size of the gadget is uh, <coughs> is getting small day by day compact while at the same time the power the functions on chips the rams and all that thing they are getting uh, like means uh, robust and heavy in their performance so basically ic's play a very important role integrated circuits play a very very important role so in today's technology like the fast changing technology the layout of ic's play a very very important role so basically semiconductor integrated circuit layout ic's layout is also a type of ip so <coughs> how you are uh, laying out the ics is also a one form of intellectual property right so basically here semiconductor integrated circuit sicld uh, this is a ip also the layout of ic so in this phone i have told you like five ips involved right right from patented technology that is display to the branding logos symbols that is been trademarked third the back panel the design the curvature the bezels these all comes under the design aspect that is third form of ip fourth uh, that copyright manual we you usually get when you order some gadgets and all so that is fourth type of ip <coughs> fifth i have told you fast in the technology nowadays ic's play a very very huge role important role in today's gadgets and the layout Uh, is thus uh, a very very uh, different uh, type of ip so basically i have told you like five ips over here so let's move on to next slide <coughs> so uh, in the next uh, i'll say uh, these are the five type of uh, ips uh, patents design trademarks gis copyrights semiconductor i have told you about patents that retina display i have told you about designs right uh, i have told you about designs the back panel trademarks logo symbols i have told you the brand geographical indications i'll tell you like a uh, little bit later copyrights i have told you uh, a user manual that we get or i see designs i see layout designs i will be told you so these are type of intellectual properties right so uh, it is the same example in the form of laptop you can see uh, the logo i have already told you all the things like logo display <sighs> geometry of that uh, body of laptop the tapers and all that thing these come under the design aspect layout of ic they all i have already told you <coughs> now ip so ip is basically involve these type of uh, you can say <coughs> these are the inputs related to ips you have to be like uh, use your brain you have to like put resources in terms of finance and all you require money to uh, like try new things and all obviously the labor which is very important so basically all these things uh, will contribute to a ip right now what is uh, what are the importance and significance of ips so <coughs> ips why are they important now uh, suppose uh, i am writing a book right and i have put like lot of hard work like 6 months a year into my book but uh, i have not get it registered somewhere like i am working on a book or i have not made my uh, the content of my book uh, registered like uh, nobody acknowledges that uh, that you are writing this book now someone come and theft and uh, the, there is a theft attempt on your uh, work which were you doing and now you are not getting the recognition for the same basically uh, fear of getting of theft of original work fear of getting no recognition for the labor done fear of not getting any uh, rewards and all so basically here the government of india comes into the picture they uh, acknowledges your work uh, they <coughs> by protecting the interests of the creator 
with the help of various acts. Uh, various acts means the patent acts and uh, trademark act, copyright act. So the government, uh, by using these type of acts, uh, protects you, protects the creativity and all. But all you have to do is register your IPs in this way. Uh, for example, if you are like uh, I've, I've told you, see, uh, innovation always requires a problem set, a problem set which is existing presently. Now, uh, there exists a, a problem, suppose. Now, you are working on that problem and you have suggested something, a new device. Uh, you have put a lot of labor uh, in that problem set and you ultimately comes up with the solution. Now, you have created the device using that solution. There was a problem. You come up with the, with the solution and you have created the device using that. Now, you have invented a new device, but you haven't taken any patents. You haven't registered your device. You have done nothing. You have just put your labor, put your money, put your hard work, put your brain and all that thing, put your resources, and you have come up with a new device. You are there with the with your new device. Now, <coughs> you are like, now you want to sell that device because uh, it uh, it has revolutionized the things like you think that it is going to create a revolution because you have like uh, suggested or you have proposed a new solution to that existing problem set. So now you sell that device under some brand name, let's say XYZ brand. Now, <coughs> but you started selling it. You are uh, you have marketed uh, your product like. Uh, that product and you start selling it. You have like uh, put your uh, lakhs of crores of money into marketing, branding, and, and development of new device. And after some time, like say, let's say three months, four months, uh, a notice from the court comes up uh, at your door end that you have violated the patent act, you have violated the trademark act, uh, you, you have violated the copyright, you have you have violated the act and it is a criminal offense basically. So you have uh, uh, invented that new device, but you haven't got a patent for it. You haven't applied for a patent. You are branded in, uh, you, you, are, you have started branding under brand name XYZ, which is already been taken by certain, certain company. Uh, the company have sued you. So basically what I'm saying is that if you are starting something new, if you are putting your labor, your uh, hard work in, in, in some product, go get it registered. Come to the government and get it registered. Now, you have seen, like, uh, what should I say? For example, in case of marriages, let's say, marriages are acknowledged by government under Marriage Act only if you go and register your marriage, right? Similarly, uh, when you were born, uh, your parents have got into the municipality and like registered, have registered your birth. Then only you have got in the birth certificate and all. Even the death got registered, like in the form of death certificate, death certificate and all. So basically, uh, registration is important because the government acknowledges then only that the certain certain things. Acknowledgement is important. Then only government can confer the rights to you. For example, if you go purchase a land from, from a seller, right, and you have not registered that land, you have just bought it uh, from that person, see, how will you uh, how will you claim your ownership rights on that, on that piece of land? Since you have not registered, the government has not acknowledged it, how can you claim the ownership of that land? You cannot claim the ownership of that land until you go to a registrar office and register your piece of land. It is important. It is important to register that land, that register that land in the office of registrar just to claim the ownership rights. So basically what I'm telling you is that the registration is, is very important. B, you are working on some new projects that you think that it might create, a, that is an innovative thing or something like you're putting a hard work in, you are building your own brand, you are an entrepreneur, you are doing a startup. So just go and get your product registered. 
you are uh, suppose you are writing a novel you are uh, writing a script for something from some for, for some series for some movie whatever you are doing like just go and get the concerned ip in this regard and i have told you the concerned ip right if you are ip is related to brand and all you have to get the trademark if you are working in technology you have to propose a new solution to that <coughs> go get a registration for the patent if you are uh, a photographer if you are a script writer if you are a author of the book novel fiction non fiction it doesn't matter just go get it registered under the concerned ip so basically what i'm telling you is that uh, i uh, that the registration of ip is very 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 important <coughs> unless you don't want to lose your hard work so basically i <coughs> the important significance i have told you now i come to the utilization and commercialization part now the utilization commercial by for, for example own use own use for example if you are an academician <coughs> if you are a researcher if you are doing btech if you are doing mtech for example if you are in fourth year of btech you have file a patent or you are second year i know means you can file at any point of time means what i am telling if you have file a patent if you go for some research like in phds and mtech your cv will stand apart right from the uh, like thousands of cvs over there since you have filed for the patent and all that thing because you can you can use it in your own way like you can use it for academic purposes you can do research on it so what i am telling you the ways of utilization of various ips now license or assign license or assign for example you can see in the case of athletes like uh, lionel messi uh, it has tie up with uh, adidas so uh, basically what messi does messi have given is shadow rights to uh, adidas so adidas can manufacture the shirt in the name of lionel messi they manufacture the uh, range of football boots in the name of messi so basically these are the type of rights that you can sell to you can assign your rights you can give the license on all this thing franchise model you always know for example mcdonalds the owner of the mcdonalds are sitting in us they won't come if you want a burger from mcd you uh, the owners from the us will not come and cook for you so basically what they have given the rights to the local people like some a dealer he will here <coughs> the franchisee model basically he will he will cook a burger and will uh, sell it in the name of mcdi so this is how the franchisee model work now the merchandise merchandise means own range of clothes movies for example disney movies line clothing line merchandise uh, for example marvel so basically these all are types of utilization and commercialization right i'll get to next slide <clears throat> now the i've told you like uh, the ways uh, the one can use common person i have told you the recognition the rewards the pride that is associated with that thing right for example i've told you that uh, there is always a problem uh, there is always a problem always this you need to find a new solution that does not exist before so basically in this way you are serving the society also like uh, society is like facing some sort of problems and all and you are coming up and proposing a new solution so basically <clears throat> you are serving the society as well so uh, satisfaction also plays a very important role the satisfaction recognition rewards in terms of financial monetary or you can say so basically the common person academics you can say research work and all that thing now a businessman for businessman always these trademarks and all like <clears throat> they are used by businessmen to build their brand value because they know that nobody can copy that logo and you can maintain the quality and all like for a, for example haldirams haldirams has built its own brand like because uh, the haldirams no nobody can Sell the namkeens and the confectionery in the name of Haldiram. Only Haldiram can 
sell in the name of Haldiram. Only Haldiram, the people, owners of Haldiram can use that branding of Haldiram. So in this way, they are assured of the quality. They can bet on their brand. They can uh, invest on their brand. And ultimately, they can bring, uh, build up the brand value. So this is how uh, a common person and a businessman can use the IPs uh, accordingly. So basically, now uh, I'll come to the patents part. Now, uh, patents, uh, first of all, uh, I've told you the example of mobile phone, right? <coughs> I've told you the example of mobile phone, like uh, by telling that the problem set of existing land, land phone, ultimately the mobile phone came. And I give the example of this mobile phone, right? In the display. Now, <coughs> I must tell you that this Retina display is a patented technology of Apple, right? Now, do you know the, uh, this uh, Retina display uh, of Apple is manufactured by the display is manufactured by Samsung, right? Samsung manufactures the display, the Retina display that Apple uses. Samsung manufactured those screens for Apple, but Samsung can't use those retina display in their own devices, right? Well, no, means I'm giving you the practical example. Apple has patented technology of the retina display. Apple <coughs> asked Samsung to manufacture the retina display. Samsung uses retina display, but they can't use it in their own phones because 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 what is patent? Patent is a grant by sovereign. Sovereign means the government. Patent is a grant by the government because government acknowledges it and it gives you the exclusive right. Exclusive right. Now, the exclusive right is this only. Since patent, since Apple owns the patent of the retina display, it can ask whatever, it can ask to Samsung, like manufacture these screens and give it back to us and it can exclude them. It can say that you can't use it in your products. Means uh, the way of using means uh, I have a discretion. I can stop others from making them, using them. And I can use them in whatever way I want. This is known as exclusive right. So Apple uses this patented technology in the way the Apple wants. Apple asks Samsung to manufacture it and give it back to them. Samsung can't use in their own words. So this is mean by the <coughs> exclusive right, right? And patent is a grant by sovereign by the government given the exclusive right uh, for an invention uh, for a limited period in exchange for disclosing the patent specification. Now patent specification is what? Patent specific, you have to disclose the specification. So patent specification is like something in simple words, I must tell you. Uh, now, this was the problem set that we have identified, right? This was a problem set. Now, we had proposed some solution, right? This is the solution. This is something new. This does not exist in prior domain, in public domain. People don't know that this kind of solution exists. Now, uh, we have. I have proposed a new solution. And now, this solution, uh, that solution to the existing problem, I have implemented uh, through a device. Now, this device, now the process, now, now from the very basic uh, identification of the problem, the background of the problem, <clears throat> what exists now, what solution you are proposing, what the, what the device actually is, how the device is implementing that solution. So basically, the start from the problem approach, problem solution approach. So this whole thing, the problem solution approach, this is known as patent specification. So <coughs> you have to disclose it if not, uh, whenever you file the application. Because in this thing, government acknowledges, acknowledges, your, uh, acknowledges your solution, that you have proposed this solution. So government acknowledges it, that you have, like, you have proposed this solution. 
government can only recognize it until and unless you show that this is the process right so government see that process and and acknowledges it and say that you are the owner you are, you, are, you have been given the exclusive right of that process right so this is known as patent this is known as exclusive right government comes into the picture and government acknowledges and confers the rights and ownership rights to the creator to the inventor of that particular invention right <clears throat> so this is patent now i have told you that uh, i have like we have talked about wireless communication we have talked about retina display so you might have like uh, so you might be thinking that you no know, patents are not a cup of tea it's like uh, too tough and all that thing but it's not the case right <coughs> see i have already told you that uh, problem do exist like always so <coughs> basically uh, like uh, it's like uh, like years back 300 400 years back see there was a issue of writing now so paper was invented paper was invented there was a issue of writing now i have told you problem set approach always you have to need to identify the problem set then only you can come up the solution now there was the issue of writing and the paper was invented in china right after that the thing uh, came that the issue was like uh, paper started manufacturing uh, uh, manufacturing paper started and all the people like they papers uh, writing on papers for documentation and all that thing now after some time now for the this paper thing i must accept this thing like manufacturing of paper inventing the paper thing like it's a big task like you have to be like uh, you have to be having knowledge of organic compounds reactions and all that thing the material knowledge and all that thing like i do here i agree that inventing paper is certainly a tough task right okay okay but now let's come to the another part now so the paper has been invented and the paper is being used for the documentation purpose now after some times then the since the documentation documentation have started the loose sheets of paper have become started becoming the major issues like <clears throat> there there are always a loose sheets and all so basically uh, some person suggested like uh, uh, what we should do <clears throat> we should punch the hole and tie a thread over there like we should tie the uh, uh, that loose sheets of paper okay so <clears throat> uh, people punch the sheets and they just uh, tie up the loose sheets okay then it's okay no problem but how will you untie it now this has become the major problem after that see you have tied the loose sheets but now no way of untying it and all that thing you have like one paper can be used for different documentation and all now you can't untie it so basically a person uh, a person was there and he comes up with a like a very uh, innovative solution that easily one can think of and in this thing i think knowing inventing paper is a big task like obviously a lot of knowledge is required but in this thing now the loose sheets of paper a person did what it it uh, you can see this string of wire now you can see this string of wire right this string of wire <coughs> okay now uh, that uh, person like uh, uh, spilled out some creativity from his brain and he what what did he do he just uh, bent this wire from one end he bent it it from one end and second bend here you can see like one went he put there second went he put there now he what he did he did third went also like this this third went basically this and what is this 
this is a paper clip the paper clip the, the paper clip consists of three bands three bands in the string of a, a normal string of a one two and third one this one <coughs> and uh, the patent was filed and the patent was granted for that see the thing is quite simple only a string of wire is there and only three bands you can do it like you you need not to be a rocket scientist or you need not to have certain like the knowledge about radio display the wireless communication or just basics some common sense some creativity and it was discovered in 1850s like means uh, it's uh, like 200 years is still not completed like so 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 common and so like down to earth solution also one of its kind you have seen like this thing you, know, you might have seen this uh, this is a bubble wrap basically when you order something from amazon some gadget from amazon some delicate item from amazon you might be getting this bubble wrap right what is this bubble wrap this is used to transport the delicate items and you know it was invented in 1950s 1950s means only 75 years means 75 years have not completed this bubble wrap so simple see it's, it's so uh, means uh, so so unique thing it's a very like you need not to be a rocket scientist to invent these things right but you have to identify the problem sets now i don't know uh, before 1950s how the delicate items were used to be transported since it was invented in 1950s very recently so basically what i'm telling you is that problem do exist and solution uh, like we are indians and we are like very creative and all so i think we must like invest some time in thinking the problem set and uh, proposing the new solution for that and these are the examples this paper clip like today it was invented in 1850s like and today 2022 two three years back it have been the business of like its uh, yearly revenue is like thousands of crores rupees is still means this is such a like a common product and so much of use like it's uses you can like you can't ignore the usage of this thing like the bubble wraps the traffic lights uh, the gillette razor the razor <coughs> so basically these all mentioned now these all mentioned have uh, like uh, contributed to the society by like removing the problem set that were like very common and like the very uh, the issue of that problems was like a very big issue and these things like paper clips the traffic lights and the bubble wrap these are very common things and obviously we don't need to be a rocket scientist to invent these things so basically what i'm telling you that you need to identify the problem set and by this thing you will be rewarded for uh, the invention as well and uh, you will serving the society as well now <clears throat> i have told you the patent is granted by sovereign state exclusive right and for the metric period and all that thing right now we come to the part of famous inventor inventions now famous inventions also you can see like i have told you the example of like uh, getting recognized you know these people right edison graham bell right brothers louis pasteur fleming now see their inventions now these inventions have like benefited the society like like anything like anything now this is the rabies vaccination you know rabies vaccination mortality rate with rabies is 100% like if you are infected with rabies and you don't get a vaccine within 48 hours you are surely you are surely going to die because the mortality rate of rabies is 100% now imagine before the invention of rabies vaccination how people used to manage the things there were so many deaths so many deaths so this person the louis pasteur like when he invented the rabies vaccination it was of immense help immense help to the society immense immense to serve the society like anything and ultimately the guy has got has got recognition but at the same time this thing the that 
he has created like rabies vaccination was a boom to the society he was like so what i'm telling you that <coughs> in this way you will get to fit nice it will help you monetarily uh, in your academics in your business and all that thing apart from that you are like serving the society also so basically it's a win win situation so i'll move further so these are the famous indian inventions uh, as you can see uh, this jaipur food uh, that is a prosthetic limb which is very affordable people who can't earlier people used to very rich and upper and uh, rich people only can afford these prosthetics because they the prosthetics were used to be imported uh, from the various country but now uh, this jaipur food it's very like, it's very economical and like common people also can afford it it has benefited the society in one way or another hepatitis vaccine and all that thing so basically these are all inventions so these are different different type of patents pos and all so see this also this is also a type of patent you see the face of the child is not fit and this is a type of patent the cap over here is a type of patent so uh, you can file the patent like It, it, it does not necessarily means you have to be a rocket scientist, right? So this is drone and all that thing. Okay. So <clears throat> now this was the case. Defense Ministry have filed the uh, like uh, the in the COVID times uh, we used to import PPE uh, from the various countries and there was very like very huge demand of PPE. Ultimately, the price of PPE was very large. so uh, defense ministry has developed its own, own low cost uh, pp and it was patented <coughs> by the government and it has massively helped the people during the covid times <coughs> so this is how like you can create something new you can innovate something you while at the same time you can serve the society now patent application filing now i have told you now you have uh, come up with the solution uh, to the problem now you have to file a patent you have to get it registered now what you have to do is you have to file the form 1 form 1 is what form 1 is details of application for example you are working uh, like something anything you can see like uh, Uh, you can see the steering wheel let's say of four wheeler engine of 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 a four wheel driver nothing uh, or anything you can say means you have to put the details of application means broader details of application like the application is about the title of application the applicant name the address of applicant so form one is the basic details like basic details of the applicant form 2 i have told you the complete specification thing like the everything from problem set to the solution part so form 2 constitutes that everything from problem to the solution part drawings description background of invention and all that thing so form 2 is a backbone of like the complete specification is a backbone of the uh, uh, your patent application right so this is form 2 form 3 uh, i must tell you that patent is a territorial right for example if you if you get a patent by the government of india so government of india will give you exclusive rights but those exclusive rights will only be valid in the territory of india it won't be valid in outside for example if you go us you can't uh, demand the government of us to give you exclusive right over there so what you have to do is uh you have to file a patent in india also you have to file a patent in us also so that you can get the exclusive rights in us also so form 3 is regarding the foreign filing okay form 1 is a basic details of applicant and all application and all the title and all form 2 is everything from to solution part description part and all that thing abstract claims and all that thing drawings form 3 is foreign filing form 5 is uh, all the things about the inventors those inventors who have invented the device and all that thing so every details about as to what is the, what are their name what are their address what are their nationality and all so form 5 is about the inventorship details 
and form 18 is the request for examination. You file these four forms, form 1, form 2, form 3, form 5. After that, you have filed for four, four forms. You file for four forms. After your application is taken for the processing part. Then after it is checked whether the application that has been filed to you is worthy of granting a patent or not, right? So this is the process. These are the forms, form one, form two, form three, form five, form eight. Now, you can see uh, uh, the government initiatives here, like the fees, total fees, you can see the natural person, startup, educational institute, you can see the total fees come up to 5,600 rupees only. <coughs> and while for the company, like organizations and all, total fees come down 28,000 rupees. So see, there is a huge, huge difference, like like five times difference, like <coughs> uh, five times the difference, like because since the government is promoting the startups, the government is uh, focusing on innovating, innovations for creating new things and all that thing. So government have like drastically reduced the price of uh, filing of patent. So it means uh, if you are interested, you can file for a patent. It's like 5,600 rupees only. You yes, you can file a, a, a patent. It, it, it will cost around 5,600 rupees only. Rather comparable to 28,000 rupees for any other organization and companies and all. Okay, <clears throat> this is the e-filing fees. Now the filing procedure is like you can file it in two ways, either uh, hard copy you can file or <coughs> you can file in online format. In online format, you require the uh, uh, digital signature of class two and class three level. This many of people, many of the person, they don't have these digital signatures. So uh, it is always ad advisable if you don't have these digital signatures, you can always go for a uh, hard copy filing hard copy filing is like there are four offices uh, delhi mumbai chennai and kolkata you can always go uh, there and you can file the application in the hard copy format in the offline format right this is e-filing portal and all that thing uh, and all these things so <coughs> patent application process i have told you uh, i will give you a, a broad about it you file a patent you File those forms I told you that file form one, form two, form three, form five, form eighteen. Okay, and you file those forms and submit to us. We will check uh, whether they are uh, you have filled them correctly or not. We will uh, raise some objections if you haven't filled. We will ask you to amend those forms and all. So we will send back them to you. You will do some corrections. You will do some amendments, and then you resend those files to us then we uh, process those files and ultimately uh, a patent is granted to you so this is how the patent application processing takes place so this is the basic basic thing <coughs> and also uh, if you uh, want to like uh, go into the uh, want to go in a little bit more detail you can always see like uh, for uh, drafting of patents you can always uh, see the google patent database or uh, ip india database there you can see the how the patents are drafted how uh, for example if you want to publish a paper in some international journal like you write a paper in abstract format how that paper that is different with that how you file a patent. The drafting is very, very different. So you can always check it in the Google. There is a lot of databases, European Patent Office database, US Patent database. So you can check the drafting over there. And you can always refer to our uh, website, ipindia.gov.it. Uh, it is government website. You can see the rules as to how to draft a patent and all that thing. The fees. Uh, that are uh, concerned with the filing and all that thing. So basically, if those are the things you can always go ipindia.gov.in, right? So I'll come to the design aspect. Uh, I'll come to design aspect now. Now, designs, I have told you, like in the case of this mobile phone, I've told you the design is the like the outer part, the design part that is visible to our eye. It has not any value functionality wise, like 
no functional no functional value right it's only the design which is aesthetic in nature like which is visible to us so design specifically i won't go into much detail so design basically i'll say in one word you might have seen uh, manish malhotra lehenga and all the designer fashion designer he is the costume designer uh, of actors and all like uh, allu arjun mahesh babu the costume they uh, wore they wear in their movies so these all thing these designs and all the, the designers lehenga manish malhotra and all these are uh, these come under the design ip these come under the the ambit of the design ip the design act right this is a design act of 2000 2001 2021 it's a latest amendment so these comes under the purview of the design ip okay what is visible to our eye it has no functional value unlike in patents patents are very well related to the functional values right for example i have told you retina display it improves the display right but the back panel and all just visible just it is like okay it is good in visibility and all no functional value right <coughs> so these are the designs <coughs> you can see if you can if you change this pattern the design is changed so basically design is very simple it is very visible something <coughs> visible to our eye now this jewelry the shape of the jewelry the spacing between it <coughs> all that thing the designs and all that aspect the beads and all that thing it comes under the design aspect those uh, imprints on the cattle uh, plates and all that the curves so these come under the design aspect right those flowers and all those imprints so these come under the design aspect design application same you can find online either on online mode or in offline mode physical filing always you can do in four offices delhi mumbai chennai and kolkata right i'll go to the trademarks now trademarks are very important uh, in marks see if you uh, want to start your own business and all so uh, for example uh, i must uh, tell you an example which is not If my slide is visible, I think my slide is visible. Okay, so so uh, I will give you the uh, example of trademarks, like in in simple way. Uh, so, uh, for example if you go to a confectionery shop right and you uh, you have to purchase a aloo bhuji or some uh, namkeens or something like that now you have got two packets in front of you one is transparent without branding right and other one is of haldirams the on the packet the word haldiram is written the brand name of haldiram there now when you buy that namkeen now you will always be very certain about that namkeen which is the under the brand name of aldera because you can trace the origin that certain manufacturer known as aldera has manufactured that aloo bhujia so you are certain a certain about the quality of that product right whether at the same time at the mean time if you see that transparent packet without any branding you are unsure you are you have no clue as to what is the like origin of that that namkeen inside that transparent packet you cannot trace its origin right while at the same time that haldiram salu bhujia you can trace its origin so what i am telling you the trademarks the brands they are used to trace the origin of the product they distinguish between the other products the other brands while at the same time right uh, see look from the consumer point of view uh, by from the consumer point of view we are very certain that the quality of this haldiram product will not be bad it will be good since it belongs to haldiram while for that transparent uh, branding with no branding we will always be very unsure that unsure that 
how will the how will be the product and what is its quality so basically the branding gives the assurance of the quality to us uh, to the consumers why let the producer side uh, the owner of that product uh, owner of the haldi ram will they, they will be very certain they will be very sure that the forgery of their product cannot be done like nobody can sell adulterated aloo bujia in in their brand names because only they can sell the thing under their brand name because they have been given the exclusive rights by the government because since haldiram only can use it they are very sure that no uh, quality of the product can be like nobody can deteriorate their quality they are whole soul controller of their quality they they control their quality so in this way <clears throat> the brand in this way in uh, by the perception of you can see from the perception of the like uh, manufacturer side you can always see that <clears throat> they are very certain that they can build their brand nobody can copy since they are controller of the uh, quality of that material they can reinvest in their brand like nobody can take it away from them so <clears throat> basically trademark is a win win situation all the ips are win win situation for both the stakeholders and stakeholder is like the consumer side and the uh, manufacturer or producer side since they both are assured of their quality entrepreneurs can build their brand because they can because they know the forgery of their brand cannot be done they are very sure while at the consumer point of view we are very sure that uh, we are eating the right product we are taking the right product we are assured of the quality and all that things so basically the government play a mediator between the two stakeholders and they uh, the government by ensuring that the trademark act that nobody can take the brand from another nobody can copy it government uh, plays a important role like uh, to ascertain the quality of the products in terms of consumers as well as for the uh, producer side right <clears throat> so uh, i must tell you the subject matter of trademark subject matter of trademark you can see uh, the service marks for example this symbol is of medi <coughs> kfc cannot use it burger king cannot use it this is the service mark exclusively owned by the mcdonalds now trade names trade names for example adidas google microsoft these all are trade names no other company can apple cannot use the name of microsoft right so this is this thing trademarks service marks i told you trade names adidas google now collective marks collective marks something interesting which i don't know you might be knowing or not i don't know uh, collective marks for example uh, i must say this like uh, ca you have, you might have heard of chartered accountancy right ca now ca is not a degree right ca is a collective trademark ca is a trademark right ca is a trademark ca is not a degree ca is a trademark by the icai institute of chartered accountants of india they give the collective mark this ca mark to the person who are good in accountancy right for example two person come in front of you and each of the person like the person a and the person b two person came in front of you and they say uh, he uh, i know accountancy better and the person b say, uh, says that i know accountancy better but now the person a is uh, having that collective mark of ca chartered accountancy now on very first instance you can like blindly tell that this person who is holding the uh, ca who is holding the ca mark is like he will be an expert in accountancy so what is this this is a trademark this is a mark this is a uh, you are uh, what you are uh, like you are getting the assurance of quality like the person who is having a ca is a certified accountant he knows accountancy pretty well as compared to the peer who have who doesn't have ca <clears throat> so what i am telling you that ca is also a type of trademark right now certification mark certification mark for example you buy a gold there are bis all marks you buy a uh, package food there is marks of isi eco mark 
okay uh, any electronic gadget ce is written conformity to europe european standard so basically these all are certification marks okay so now new certification mark now the tagline and slogans tagline slogans uh, for example coca cola sell uh, coca cola says that we sell happiness this is a tagline of coca cola so nobody can use it pepsi cannot use it pepsi can't say that we sell happiness only coca cola can sell can say that we sell happiness pepsi ka tagline ye dil mange wo so basically what i'm telling you that this is also a type of trademark no other company can use it right <coughs> now the shapes now this symbol of adidas three stripes this is a unique symbol of adidas nobody can copy it from adidas <coughs> that tick mark sign the swoosh sign of nike nobody can copy it so these are also these signs are also the type of uh, the shapes basically the shapes stripes and all that thing these are also a type of trademark <coughs> now the sound marks sound marks you might have heard but you are not knowing them correctly that these are also a type of trademarks uh, for example if you uh, have windows installed in your laptop right if you have the laptop which runs on the os of window now you every time you shut down every time you open your windows like there is a particular sound right and compared to the sound if you are having a macbook if you are having a apple laptop and all that thing just there are different sounds for example if you uh, switch off your phone which is of brand uh, nokia brand and now you switch off your uh, samsung phone the sounds are different like aisa kabhi nahi hua ki ki samsung is is using the like that uh, the shutting uh, that uh, the <clears throat> the marks the the voice of the sound of uh, that nokia samsung won't use it like the airtel that famous airtel ringtone we have heard we might all have heard that famous airtel ringtone that is also a sound mark so basically these are also the type of trademarks unless uh, i think only we have heard like that coca cola is a trademark no apart from this bis is a trademark hallmark eco mark these are certification marks collective mark chartered accountancy sound marks windows uh, shut down windows opening sound these all are type of trademarks right <coughs> so i simply go to further how to ind indicate your trademark uh, trademark uh, see if you have applied for the trademark it will show like this tm right it shows that it is either registered or unregistered or it is a processing stage while the r symbol with a circle you can only use when it is registered okay now this is a how the copyrights now we will go to the copyrights <coughs> so uh, i'll straight away move to the subject matter of copyright now the copyright uh, like it is also a very interesting uh, thing uh, the copyright the, all the artwork that we used to do like uh, any literary work like uh, writing a book and all that thing painting right photography any musical work scripts sound recording music composing producing a film producing a serial all that things these are these come under the ambit of the copyright act like this come under the this is all these all are the subject matter of copyright for example if you are writing a book it comes under the literary works artistic work like painting and all i have told you cinematography films uh <coughs> producer of the movie and all that thing so i have told you this like now see uh, in copyright what matters is the first owner of copyright right so first owner of copyright is who like for example chetan bhagat writes a novel and he sells his rights to a movie producer now the first owner of that script of that story is chetan bhagat while at the same time he have uh, sell his rights to a producer but first owner of, the first owner of copyright remains 
the first owner of that work, that novel, the first owner, Chetan Bhagat will remain the first owner. Though he can sell, he can transfer its rights to some movie producer, some serial producer and all that thing, but the first owner, so first owner is very important. For example, uh, you might have seen, uh, suppose in the case of photograph, you can see the first owner is always a photographer. Any movie or serial, first owner is the producer. <coughs> so basically, first owner is like uh, he's he is the first owner. Like for example, if uh, if uh, in in case like if any of like uh, Indian newspaper, let's say the Telegraph, the Indian Express, they post an image that is uh, like uh, that uh, the ownership of that photo is taken by some photographer of Times Magazine. The Times Magazine in London, right? That own that the rights of that photograph resides with that photographer and the Times Magazine, right? So if the Telegraph or Indian Express or the Hindu newspaper have to publish that image, they always have to take the permission of the owner, right? And they do always mention the source and the credits. Always they always mention the source. That source is particular particular photographer. Of Times Magazine means I'm I'm telling the first owner the means of the first owner. Now, for example, let's say a film, a film. For example, uh, uh, recently the, the the film, the producer is the first owner, the author of that copyright means all the broadcasting rights and all that thing resides with the photographer. All the ownership regarding the broadcasting, the broadcasting rights and all that thing resides with the producer producer can uh, solely determine as to which platform he wants to like broadcast his movie and all that thing like uh, if he wants to uh, give it uh, it movies on the ott platform he want to broadcast it on the pvrs if he want to broadcast in inox means producer have the exclusive rights producer is the first owner now uh, when you might have seen like uh, sometimes uh, some you search for a movie, let's say Triple R movie was released like sometimes back, right? And you search it on YouTube, like Triple R. Now you won't find it in the YouTube and you will always see like something uh, written uh, below that the contents of this video has been removed by YouTube since it was violating uh, the Copyright Act, right? Because the, 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 Means by uh, what I'm telling you, the the content has been removed because it has been in the violation of the copyright act. Because somebody has posted or uploaded or uh, that movie on the YouTube platform, the producer can always ask the platform to remove it because the producer is the first owner of that. Producer will give the consent. Producer give, will not give its con consent. Nobody can publish and broadcast it on their platform. So what I'm telling you is the ownership, ownership uh, that the ownership that rights uh, because a person have registered its movie under Copyright Act and all that thing. So the producer have the exclusive rights on that on the broadcasting and <coughs> publication of that movie, right? And same goes with the musical work and the skit plays, dramatic works, and all that thing, composing music and all that thing. Right. So, so it is uh, like uh, same. Uh, I've told you uh, this is the basic. Also, uh, it is uh, you can go like, examination process is like this. Uh, you can always go for the registration. And I must say, you must always go for the registration. Now, SICLD, SICLD, I've told you uh, in fast moving, uh, in the era of fast moving, uh, fast changing technology, ICs layout play a very, very important role. And uh, since uh, the technology is changing very fast, SICLD, like uh, it's a new concept, it's a new type of IP introduced like in very recent times. Uh, so SICLD uh, is their integrated circuit layout design. It's a type of IPs and it is relatively new. 
Uh, if you want to see more about it, uh, just go to the ipindia.gov.in and you can see the like details of the SICLD. Right. Now I will go to GIs. <coughs> GIs, I have told you that uh, I have uh, uh, like initially uh, introduced you the five type of IPs uh, in the mobile phone, but this was like missing. So GI is basically, what is GI? GI is basically, uh, it identifies a product. Uh, it is basically uh, related to the some specific origin, some specific origin and geographical uh, Origin basically a geographical region. For example, like if we talk about a Darjeeling tea, right? So, <coughs> so it talks about the tea that is being locally, uh, like locally produced in that region, like the region from <coughs> Himachal Pradesh or Uttarakhand can't go and claim the uh, and uh, and claim that the tea made by them is a is a Darjeeling tea. So basically, what is GI? GI is uh, it basically identifies a product. For example, just a trademark uh, identifies the origin of the product. Similarly, GIs are basically trademarks lead to the manufacturer, leads to the brand. But in this case, GIs, GIs, the origin of the product lead to a specific origin, geographical origin. I have told you. Darjeeling tea, for example, Kanchipuram silk, for example, Pashmina shawl, for example. So these are specific to their origin. It is generally used, basically, the GIs are given um, basically to like to a whole region or group to promote, like to promote the exports from there, to promote the business of the local people, to promote the tourism, to reward their work with, uh, with like with monetary. In monetary terms, so I, I've similarly told that the people uh, producing uh, tea in Himachal Pradesh is not entitled to sell its tea in the brand name of Darjeeling tea, right? It cannot sell its tea in the name of Darjeeling tea. So basically, only the people from that area, from the Darjeeling area, can sell their tea in the name of Darjeeling tea. So basically, it gives like uh, them the monopoly, some rights, some benefits to the local. Uh, producers in the Darjeeling area so that we can promote their product. Also, the quality of that product is maintained because while exporting and all that thing, the quality is sometimes a criteria. It's always a criteria, in fact. So basically, uh, it promotes the region. So GIs are like that only. <coughs> so I have told you the example, uh, like Darjeeling tea, I have told you, Kachipuram silk. Uh, uh, for example, in Karnataka, uh, that is uh, that one is very famous. When I was in class ten, I have seen like I, I remember still the Mysore Agar Bhakti. It is also a GI geographical indication. People residing in UP or Madhya Pradesh cannot sell their Agar Bhakti by the name of Mysore Agar Bhakti. Agar Bhakti, Mysore Agar Bhakti is a GI which only the people of that area can sell in their name. Right, so. Mysore Agarbatti, for example, is a GI, so nobody can uh, sell it. For example, if you go uh, global, like Swiss watches and all, nobody <coughs> can make a watch and brand it as a Swiss watch. Okay, so basically, it's a type of that thing. <coughs> Another thing you can see, like Scotch, Scotch is very like certain, it traces its origin to the Scotland, right? Scotland. So basically, these all are things like these the GIs, they point to a specific geographical origin. <coughs> right. So basically, uh, this is this. Uh, so uh, IPs everywhere. Basically, I have told you. So, uh, okay. So basically, uh, IPs everywhere everywhere and just want to end the slides very soon uh, i'm not feeling very good because my health is very down a lot of high people so basically i'm just trying to conclude the, my presentation and all <clears throat> so uh, i just uh, want to uh, go through some basic revision which 
you might get like uh, easy some practical questions like right? now which type of ip protects the painting painted by artists now i have told you art art is always related to the copyright right so which type of ip protects the painting painted by artists so painting is an art it is always protected by copyright okay now which what protects intellectual property created by fashion designers now fashion designers i have told you uh, manish lotra lenga and all that thing that comes under the design aspect right that is visible to eye aesthetic nature beautiful lagna can can aesthetic students can unmute and answer the questions that will be better <sighs> arpit sir ha ha can you make uh, students to answer to these questions fine 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 i am okay with it so we'll so, ask uh, students if you okay 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 i'll i'll get to the next question right yes yes okay. sir so uh, what protects the advanced disc brake for bike developed by the inventors now what protects the advanced disc brake for bike now advanced disc brake is what it's a invention right it's related to technology advanced disc brake is used to uh, like to uh, remove some problem that is existing with the uh, conventional set of brakes so uh, new uh, set of brakes uh, that are displays have been introduced so what type of ip will be be used to protect that invention now please if anybody can tell whether it will be protected under the copyright or it will be protected under the gis patents design or trademarks if anybody can like you can put it in the chat box also <clears throat> if you can please answer it in chat box it will be fine advanced disc brake new technology removing the problem existing with the conventional set of brakes okay so i am telling you the advanced disc brake is related to the new technology right so the technology always you have to file a patent for it all the inventions as the marriages uh, without marriage act is impossible birth without birth certificate is impossible invention without patent is impossible so basically any new invention in science and tech all that thing it comes under the patents directly right so advanced disc brake will come under the patents now which of these is a geographical indication geographical indication is anybody can tell uh, which of these is a geographical indication bmw nagpur orange gis are always related to what a special a origin a geographical region can you see the examples can you see the options bmw sir we will ask students to answer to this question okay 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 fine 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 so they, uh, they may post their answer in chat box yeah yeah, yeah. i have i have i have said that please okay okay nice very nice shashank has posted one answer please uh, yes very right mr jagdish you have posted bmw nagpur or iron machine with stem yes yes so the answer is right very right so the answer is now yes it's right okay, very right so we will move to next question uh, <clears throat> now what does the trademark protect i have told you trademark right please answer what does the trademark protect is it a invention is it a work of art it is is it logos name or brands or a secret formula logos names and brands yes yes exactly exactly all the brands if you start if you want to start a new business if you want to if you want a startup if you if you are involved in entrepreneurship in later point of your life all that thing you have to have to come across this thing the trademark so basically trademark registration is very important and trademarks is always related to names and brands you want to build a brand go get a trademark right invention i have told you 
marriages without uh, marriage act births without birth act is not possible invention without patent is not possible so invention is protected by a patent right second one a work of art art is always related to copyright copyright painting, painting books stories music uh, films and all that thing right so this is this thing now how long a patent can last this have not i have told you uh, i i have told you for a year exactly exactly for a limited period of time it's for 20 right 20 years right now i'll come to the next question now please tell this question if you write an original story what type of intellectual property gives to the right to decide who can make and sell copies of your work copyright exactly and other people what they are writing yeah right so <coughs> if you write an original story what type of intellectual property gives you the right to decide who can make and sell copies of your work your work original story original story means you are writing a book or something like that which is related to art and art is always related to copyright gi to the region patents invention designs aesthetic in nature lehenga and all trademarks brand and brands and logos right now last question just be little patient and answer this question it's a good question <coughs> just aram se just read it twice if a company develops a new technology that improves its main product no 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 this one is not aram se ha this is no no this is a question sorry Imagine a cricketer sets up his own company to sell his own range of clothes. What type of IP can he use to show that the clothes are made by his company? <coughs> Please answer. Like, just read the question like twice. Copyright. Twice, twice, twice. twice. I'm saying that. Imagine a cricketer sets up his own company to sell his own range of clothes. Like these. he wants to sell the clothes right now how will he sell the clothes what type of ip can he use to show that the clothes are made by his company the design how, how can you distinguish he wants to sell his own range of clothes trademark designs yeah exactly the previous one no 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 you have to sell anything under some brand you know you always have to sell it under brand you can't sell trademark so always yes exactly trademarks are related to the brands and logos right always you have to you have to if you are dealing anything with brand so now a cricketer sets up his own company now he has created a company and he is selling his clothes now he will sell its clothes under some brand name so that brand name is always always connected to the trademark directly right so very well very good answer right it's a trademark nice answer now this is the last thing please <coughs> just go through easy and think if a, if a company develops a new technology that improves its main product Improve. exactly exactly improvement always leads to a solution part right there is some problem with the existing product that we can rectify some more thing some more thing and we can provide a better and alternative solution to that thing to the to that problem so solution part the problem to solution part always always related to a patent so basically the answer is correct uh, it is related to a patents now this new technology always led to a patent because it certainly uh, rectify the mistakes of the existing problem right so basically this is this uh, i was a little bit low today because i have very high fever still and i have to take one paracetamol so basically uh, i think uh, i have like i i tried my best 
I think you have got some basic ideas about it. And uh, this is this set. Uh, I completed my presentation. Also, uh, it's a earnest request to all of you that uh, if you have any any doubt, right? Any doubt. This is my email ID. Just drop a mail in this. <coughs> this is my email ID, ajoc.ip at the rate gov.in. Okay, if you have any doubt uh, regarding anything, uh, so kindly drop an email in that email ID and I'll try to like revert back and do the like, best in my capabilities. Okay. So, uh, Santosh said it's to you. Yes, sir. Ganga. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm the voice of President of Innovation Incubation Cell, Mr. Jagdish, sir, to give a vote of thanks. Yeah, thank you, Ganga. First of all, I would like to express a heartfelt thanks to Arpit Joshi, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, even though he is not feeling well, I can see him uh, from the past two hours. He is continuously taking the session. That too, very interactive student. I can see the stu at uh, what speed students are answering the questions. Yes, yes, exactly. That I can exactly. understand that uh, how the session has undergone from the past two hours. So first of all, I'd like to thank Arpit Joshi once again on behalf of Thondadara College of Engineering, Gadag. Thank you, sir. And in future also, we need the same kind of uh, sessions. That too, if it is if it would be offline, uh, students will be uh, benefited in a more better way. So I request Arpit, sir, to come to our uh, place, Karnataka. I invite him uh, using this platform on behalf of Thondadara College of Engineering, sir. So I welcome, you can come to our place can have similar kind of uh, sessions in our uh, institute, sir. Sure, sir. I would love to, sir. I would love to. Yeah. And also, I thank uh, today's uh, faculty coordinator, Santosh Kumar Kandigal, sir, who has coordinating this. From the uh, last month also, he has uh, planned the similar kind of uh, event. But because of the resources, <laughs> we were not able to uh, make the arrangements. So because now our pizza has uh, uh, available with us. So that's why we have planned today. And also I thank uh, a special thanks to first year students who are enthous enthusiastically attending this session. At that uh, year, first year level, they are showing interest towards IPR. It will be a great uh, future for Thondara College of Engineering. In the coming three years, we can see patents uh, going to be happening in the institute side. So in, in that context, our pizza will definitely guide us in future. If any students wants to do a, go for patenting, so we'll take a help from Arpit sir. Uh, and also I thank uh, there are students from second year, third year students are also attending this session. I thank all these students also. And lastly, uh, the organizing the student committee, Ganga and other <coughs> who are anchoring this. And uh, thank you, thank you all. Anything uh, uh, you can thank add, uh, Kandigal sir, I request Kandigal sir to add anything. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a wonderful session. So uh, for especially first year and second year students, it is an eye opener. Even as I have discussed with them that uh, before going to take up any project work or completion of project work. So have an idea about this uh, IPR. So really it, it went uh, very smoothly. And even though you have managed uh, as even uh, help was upset. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, uh, complete uh, cooperation. Also, I thank uh, all uh, my faculty coordinators and students. So anyway, uh, already have shared a feedback link. 
in the chat box as well as uh, uh, we will uh, we have shared in whatsapp group so please fill the feedback form and uh, as we, as the certificates will be uh, prepared we will send the intimation send the certificates thank you everyone thank you jagdish sir thank you santosh sir uh, it was nice it was a pleasure interacting with you people and uh, i once again say that please the persons whether the students in like third year or fourth year when i was in my fourth year i didn't know about patents and all so since you have basic awareness about the patent just try to like uh, if you are doing a project think of its that way like if we can file a patent and all that thing right it would be very helpful for you also and helpful to the society as a whole and i have uh, shared my email id uh, already above so if there is any problem just drop me an email and I, i'll try uh, and we'll get back to you and thank you very much thank you very much and sorry for my bad health thanks <laughs> thank you sir uh, thank you very much and thank you with your permission uh, we shall close here sir okay thank you sir yes sir thank you sir thank you <coughs>